Welcome back everybody. This is Steve, KM9G, and I had a little accident in my ham shack the other day. Don't worry, everybody's okay. Nothing to see here. Well, I mean, there is. Watch the video. Don't get me wrong. But uh, what I did was a very routine thing. I did sudo apt-get dist upgrade, trying to make sure that my machine was all patched and up to date, as one should very often. And it proceeded to wipe out my logs and the database that kept my logs and the software that I use to keep my logs in my logging database. But, but, but it's okay, I guess, because I'm an IT professional and of course I have a backup. So before we get too far into this, um, there are some links down below, the join button, the subscribe button, the thumbs up, there's a place to put some comments down there. Uh, there is a bunch of links in the description for all the software and stuff we're gonna be talking about today. And we will see you after the break. Okay, we have our Zubuntu 2004 image burnt out to a USB flash drive. We've got the flash drive inserted into the MacBook Air. When you turn it on, you press the power key, let go, you hear the fantastic Mac chime. Uh, did you know that they're actually all different for all the different Macs, the different classes of Macs, they make different chime sounds? Anyway, back to the topic at hand. Hold down the option key when it is powering up to give you the option to boot off of some external media source or to boot off of the internal media source. With the USB flash drive installed in the machine, it gives me three choices. The first one is to boot off of the internal hard disk. We don't want that, we're done with that OS. The second one is an EFI boot with no real label. And the third one is an EFI boot with no label. So what do you do when you're faced with two choices? You just pick one. It kind of doesn't matter because you know, it kind of doesn't matter. I picked the first one. The first one worked fine. And that's where we are right now. All right, it booted up with the laptop display as primary and the external display that you guys are seeing as secondary. Let's get that set up right away. Okay, that looks better. So I'm gonna double click on the install Ubuntu icon. Install Zubuntu icon, because that's why we're here. That's what we wanna do. All right, English for the installer, followed by English for the keyboard layout. And I want to install third-party software for the graphics and Wi-Fi and additional media formats, etc. cetera, um, because this does not support out of the box the Wi-Fi card that's in this laptop. All right, it has found the botched install of the previous operating system that we tried to install. Let's wipe that out. We're gonna erase the disk and install Zubuntu. And erasing the disk is fine. And central time is the best time zone. And my name. And I call this machine Airbud for no particular reason. And I'm going to log in automatically. And this is my ham computer, so I don't really worry about having a um, strong password here. And we're going to let this thing copy all of its files and we'll be right back. And we're back and the install is finished. Let's do the restart now button and see what happens. Okay, so it is fully booted and it's doing the, the dual screen thing with the capture card and the built-in laptop display. So let's get that squared away real quick again. 
All right, incomplete language support. It wants to download more languages. Sure, why not? System doesn't have enough information about available languages. Do you want to update now? Let's update. And it wants to check the internet connection, which I was kind of not surprised about. Let's uh, let's get this, this thing online. All right, we are connected to Wi-Fi. All right, let's close that. And close that. And we've now got a running Zubuntu system. That was fairly easy. Uh, there was some complications trying to install a couple of other operating systems before we got this far. This is the one that is working right now. Let's stick with this and get some applications installed and make this a happy Mac for me. Okay, we've got this thing up and running. And the first thing I want to do is all the updates before it has a chance to wipe out my logs. So let's do that real quick. On Ubuntu, you can hit Control Alt T to bring a terminal up right away. I'm going to go ahead and maximize that. And I'm going to hit Control Shift Plus to increase the font size. Sudo dash I is going to get me to my privileged access. I'm going to do it as an interactive shell so I don't have to type sudo all the time. Apt update. 146 packages can be upgraded. Let's do uh, apt upgrade dash Y because I don't like when people ask me questions. I do, that was just a joke. All right, we have finished all of the regular updates. Now let's do a distribution upgrade. Nothing to see there. Let's try a full upgrade. Nothing to see there either. So we are ready to go on that front. Okay, first up is let's see if FLDigi is in the apt repository because I use that for Morse code decoding. And it is. And I see FL rig and FL wrap and JSA call, but for now we're going to do FL Digi and FL Rig. And yes, I want to do the thing I just asked you to do. All right, that is all installed. Let's see what's next. Okay, next up, let's see what version of WSJTX comes down from the repository. All right, WSJTX is 2.1.2. And I know there is a newer version out than that, so let's go and get that off of a web browser. Okay, next up is WSJTX. I'm going to open up a web browser and get that downloaded. Mousepad, I don't know why it wants to pick mousepad, but let's go ahead and save the file out to our downloads folder. And let's open it with software installer. All right, we've got WSJTX. I'm going to get JSA call the same way. Hey, this one wants to open up with the right package. All right, we've got JSA call installed. The next one does come from the package repository, and this is the log program that I use. sudo apt install cqr log, and I'm happy with the version that comes from the software repositories. And if you have seen any of my live operating streams, this is the log program that I use in those live streams. All right, that is all installed. Now I've got a couple of things that make me happy at the command line. Uh, chsh for change shell to uh, slash bin slash zsh. Is it already installed? Let's install it first. I prefer zsh over bash. 
It has a couple of neat features to it. Uh, let's see. And then the next thing that we need to do is install the oh my ZSH plugin. So we'll pull up a web browser and we will go to oh my ZSH. And click install. And we will copy this line. And it's going to tell me curl's not installed. Hey. And it will tell me how to install curl. And I keep touching the touchpad with my hand. Doesn't have Git installed. Doesn't tell me how to install Git this time, but we've been paying attention, so we know. And yes, I want to change my default shell to ZSH, which I already did. And now we're in ZSH. The next thing that I like to have on is a uh, command prompt, the actual prompt itself, uh, and it's called liquid prompt. And so we go to GitHub and we get liquid prompt and I click the code button and I click the copy to the clipboard link to get the HTTPS version. And then we do CD to make sure we're in our home, CD to make sure we are in our home directory, git clone paste. And then in order to install it, source slash liquid prompt, liquid prompt. And now I have the liquid prompt installed and I have the oh my ZSH plugin installed on top of the ZSH shell, which is set as my default shell. All of that will take place when I log out and log back in again. Um, one of the things that liquid prompt does for me is it will tell me which branch I am on in, um, in the GitHub repository, which is nice because I work in GitHub all day long. And the other thing it will do is if I run a long command, let's let this marinate for a second. When I exit out of the long command, it will tell me that it took six seconds to run. So I just happen to like those features. So that is it for command line happiness on Linux. And there you have it, folks. Linux has come a long way since the very beginning. It was fairly easy to install once we got the right version of Linux to install. And it was fairly easy to get uh, all the software that we wanted to use installed on it as well. It wasn't terribly painful. I didn't have to do a lot of compiling. I didn't do a lot of disk swapping or downloading or scratching my head for dependencies or anything like that. It just works these days. Fairly straightforward. I'm going to get to uh, getting my logs imported, and I'm going to get back to Play and Radio. So this has been Steve, KM9G, and as always, I want to thank you for being awesome, and stay tuned for a list of patrons that help keep this channel up and running.